Today in class, we're going to be taking notes over 5.1 through 5.4. Once again, this is going to be to help you with your quiz coming up on Monday. First thing is, there's going to be some vocab terms that you're going to want to know. The first one, does anyone know what a comparison of two quantities is called? Three to four, three to four, or three to four. There's three different ways you could write it. Josh? A ratio. A ratio is correct. Looking at the next one, this is a ratio of two quantities using different units. So you can see here the example is 16 miles per four hours. Does anyone know what that is? Jonathan? A rate is correct. This compares a quantity to one unit of another quantity. So you can see here it says four miles per one hour. This is called not just a rate, but a unit rate. Raise your hand if you could tell me this always has to have a denominator of a certain number. Do you know what number? Taylor? One. Of, of one is correct. The next one says two ratios that describe the same relationship. So three miles per hour is the same thing as six miles for two hours. Do you guys know what that's called when there's two ratios describing the same kind of thing? Equality. Not equality, but that's kind of close. Equivalent. rates. And then the last one, it says two ratios that are set equal to each other. I've taught you three different ways that you can solve these using mental math, multiplication, or cross products. Does anyone know what two ratios set equal to each other is? It is called a proportion. So on your test next week, there will be a section that has a few questions, and you're going to need to know the difference between these different terms. So make sure you study this important information for your quiz and test next week. Use the table below to write the ratio, find the value of the ratio, and then interpret what that ratio means in a complete sentence. Let's look at the original problem here. I am comparing sugar to what? To mint leaves, very good. So I'm going to look over here in my fruit punch ingredients, and the first thing I've got to figure out is my first ingredient, sugar. Well, how much sugar does it tell me we need? A half, a half of a cup, very good. So we're going to compare one half to, Vivian, how many mint leaves do we need for the recipe? Three to three-fourths of a cup. So that's how we can write the ratio. Remember, there's two other ways. We could have written it as a fraction or with the word two, T-O, in the middle. Now we need to find the value of the ratio. There's not a ton of room on that line, so if you want, you can just draw a little arrow, and we'll do it down here at the bottom. Remember, you have to take the first amount, which is one-half, and divide it by the second amount, which is three-fourths. Another way to write that is simply one-half divided by three-fourths. Am I allowed to divide fractions? No. no. So, Vivian, what method do I need to use? KFC. KFC. So we'll keep the first one, flip the second one, and change that operation. Taylor Graham, is there anything that I can cross-reduce there? Yes. Which ones? Um, two and four. What do the two and four become? One and two. A one and two. When you multiply that out, Jonathan, what do you get? Two thirds. Two thirds. So we'll put that up there at the value of our ratio. The next thing is we need to interpret. What in the world does this mean? So it's been a little while since we studied 5.1 where we did interpretations. How I would interpret this is the amount of, and what was the very first ingredient that was there in the original problem? Well, what was it? Sugar. sugar. So the amount of sugar is two-thirds because that's the value of my ratio. It's two-thirds the amount of, and Vivian, what was the second ingredient mint. of mint leaves? And that is how you do the interpretation. All right, the next problem looks very similar to this. I want you guys to take a minute and try to do problem B on your own. All right, let's see how you did. We are comparing club soda to lime juice. What did you write for the ratio? Four to four-thirds. All right, now to find the value of the ratio, once again, I'm going to kind of do it below. We're taking that first one, four, and dividing it by four-thirds, which means four over one divided by four-thirds. We're going to keep flip change. So I kept the first one, 
flipped the second one and changed the operation. You can cross-reduce. And what's your value of your ratio? Three. Three. Three is correct. Does anyone want to read me what you wrote for your interpretation? What did you write? Uh, the amount of club soda is three the amount of water use. Okay, very close. There's just one extra little word we want to put in there. Okay, it sounded kind of funny when you said the amount of club soda is three the amount of lime juice. Three what? What, is, what do you think I could put in there? Three times. Three times the amount. Very good. So if you did, I would say the amount of club soda is three times the amount of lime juice. All right. Beforehand, we didn't have to put the word times because we just had a fraction in problem A. But if you've got a whole number, you want to say three times the amount of lime juice. Great job on the interpretation, guys. Number two, it says to write the missing values in the ratio table and then write the equivalent ratios. If I am going from the top to the bottom of a ratio table like this, what do I have to do? Divide. Divide, very good. If I'm going from the bottom to the top, I'm going to do the opposite, which is multiply. multiply. So you can see we're trying to find three different things here of how many miles per hour we will go. So let's do the first one and the second one and then the third one. Looking at the first one, Taylor Dollar, what should I do? Very good. We're working from top to bottom, so we're going to go 24 divided by 3 fourths. This is going to try to find us the value of our ratio. So you can rewrite it 24 over 1 divided by 3 fourths. What do I do next, Taylor? Very good. We're going to do the KFC. So we keep the first one, flip the second one and change the operation. Can you cross-reduce anything? Um, yes. yes, you can. The 3 and 24, what do they become? Very good. They become a 1 and an 8. So multiply that out, and what do you get for the value of your ratio? Very good. 32 over 1 just means 32 if it's simplified. So let's put that up in our table. Now, guys, if we found the value for that one, what can I do with the rest of the table? You're right. It gets to go all the way across, 32 for each one. Let me have Vivian help us with the second part. I'm going from an 8 down to the bottom. Is that going to be dividing or multiplying? Dividing. dividing. Very good. So what do I write? Excellent. Can I reduce that at all? What number goes into an 8 that also goes into a 32? There's something bigger than a 4. An 8. Very good. So we're going to divide by 8 on the top and on the bottom. What do you get? 1 fourth is correct. So then we can see up there at the top, in 8 miles, it will take me 1 fourth of an hour. Josh, do the third one for me. I'm working from the bottom to the top, so what should I do? Very good. Can I cross-reduce anything? Yeah. Yes, we can see that they're both even numbers, so it can obviously be reduced. And you could just take half of 32. Very good. It'd become a 1 and 16. When you multiply it out, what do you get? 16. 16. And then I'm going to stick that up there into my ratio table. Now it asks me to write the equivalent ratios. Remember when we're doing that, we don't need that missing link in the middle anymore, and we're comparing the miles to the hours. The first one is 24 to 3 fourths. Jonathan, what's the next one? 8 to 1 fourth. And Taylor, what's the final one? Very good, 16 to 1 half. And those are our equivalent ratios. For the next problem, it asks us to find the unit rate. If you go back to your notes at the very beginning, in red, we talked about the unit rate. And there it tells us it always has to have a denominator of the number... One. one. Very good. Okay, so if I were to start off with this one right here, it says 80 pounds to 5 months. Jonathan, how would I write that as a fraction? Okay, and we're going to put our units attached to it also, 80 pounds per five months. Now remember, our goal is to get this with a denominator of one. How can I turn that five months into one month? I'm going to divide by five. So we're going to be fair, divide by five on the top and divide by five on the bottom. Jonathan, what do you get when you divide by five on the top and bottom? 16. Okay, 16 what? Give me units. Um. Per... 
for one month. Okay, so very important, when it asks you for a unit rate, make sure you attach the units to that problem also. I want you to try problem B on your own. So for those of you listening at home, pause the video and then see if you can do it on your own. So to start us off, Josh, what'd you write? Okay, 14 miles per three and a half hours. What do we do to get that one on the bottom? Uh, How do I get my denominator to become a one? Divide. Divide by? 3.5. Very good. We divide by 3.5 on the top and bottom, and what's your answer? Four miles per one hour. Four miles per one hour. That's excellent. Once again, a unit rate. You always want a denominator of one, and you want units in both the numerator and the denominator. Good work, guys. All right, for section four, it says to tell whether or not the rates are equivalent. You're going to have instructions that are just like that on your quiz or test. Now, what I am asking you now is to show how to find the answer by using two different ways. On your quiz, you're not going to have to show me two different ways. You'll get to choose which way you want to do. But I want to just remind you of two separate ways that you could do a problem like this. So we're trying to compare 60 feet for every five years and 26 feet for every two years. The first way I'm gonna show you how we can do it is the unit rate, kind of like what we just did a minute ago. So we're gonna take 60 feet for every five years and write that as a fraction, 60 feet per five years. Remember when trying to find the unit rate, we want our denominator to be the number one. one. Will, how do I get this to turn into the number one in my denominator? Very good. We're going to divide by 5 on both the top and the bottom. Will, when you do that, what do you get? Okay, very good. So once again, unit rate, we want units to be attached. So 12 what per what? 12 feet for every one year. Very good. 12 feet per year. Now we're trying to see if that's equivalent to the next one. Taylor, what should I write for the next one? Very good. Now, once again, we want our denominator to be a 1, so what should I divide by? We should by 2. All right, we're going to divide by 2 on the top and by 2 on the bottom. When you do that, what do you get? All right, guys, what do you think? 12 feet per year and 13 feet per year. Is that equivalent? No. No, that's different. It's close, but it is different. So the answer would be no, all right? That is one way that you can show me if something is equivalent or not. There's another way that you could answer a problem like this by showing me cross products. Let's put the first one as a fraction, 60 feet for every five years. So we've got 60 feet per five years. Remember with cross products, we're going to have two ratios set equal to each other. So equals, Taylor Graham, what's the other side going to say? Um, All right, so what we're doing now is we're comparing this second unit right here. So equals 26 feet per two years. All right, now Taylor, if I'm doing cross products, what do I need to circle? All right, very good. So we're going to circle the 60 and 2. What else am I going to circle? Five and 26. Very good. Now, everybody drop down your equal sign. On the left side, Will, what am I going to write? Um, 60 times 5. Not 60 times 5. What's diagonal from 60 it? Times 60 times 2. Vivian, what's on the other side? 5 times 26. Okay, 5 times 26. Now, you could also do 26 times 5. Either one's fine. Drop down your equal sign, plug those in, and see if yes, they equal each other, or no, they do not. All right, guys, what's the left side equal? 120. 120. What about the right side? 130. 130. Do those two equal each other? No. no. So remember, we can put a little line right there in between it, and then we can go ahead and write the word no. Once again, this was just another way to show the exact same thing that we showed with the unit rate. 
Number five says to tell whether the quantities are proportional by determining if the value of the ratio is equivalent or equal, all right? So we've got three different sections. That's the first one, the second one, and the third one. Notice we know how many cups each one is per how many tablespoons each one is. The first one, we're just gonna divide the top number by the bottom. So what will I write? 15 divided by three. Guys, what's 15 divided by three? Five. So the value of the first ratio is five. I'm not gonna put it all the way across because right now I'm trying to determine are they all the same or are they not all the same? Okay, let's go on to the second one. Josh, what should I write for the second one? 65 divided by 5. All right, so not 65 divided by 5, 13. divided by 13. Our goal is to see, does it equal 5? Josh, what is 65 divided by 13? You are correct, it is 5. So far, does it look like things are equivalent in our ratio table? Yes, it does. There's only one left. Vivian, what should I write for the third and final one? Ten divided by one half. Ten divided by one half. All right, another way to write that is ten over one divided by one half. We've got to use our KFC method, so we keep the first one, flip the second one, and change the operation. Vivian, what is the value? Uh, ten. I mean, twenty. Twenty. Let's put that up at the top. Guys, what do you think? Is the entire table proportional? No. no. The first two both equal 5, but the last one equaled 20, which means the whole table is not proportional. Number 6 says to tell whether or not the ratios form a proportion using cross products. I want you guys to draw a red fluffy cloud around the words cross products. Sometimes it's going to tell you specific ways that you have to solve it. In this case, for both A and B, we have to use cross products. So when coming up on your quiz and test, always look and read the instructions very carefully. Vivian, would you do this first one for us, please? Very good. Okay, we're using cross products. So what is diagonal from each other that I should circle? Very good. All right, we're going to drop down our equal sign. On the left side, Jonathan, what should I write? Okay, we're going to start with the other one, 6 times 10, and on the other side, we'll put 4 times 8. The order does not necessarily matter. Either one of them is fine, okay? Um, 6 times 10, what is that, guys? 60. 60. 4 times 8? 32. Do those two equal each other? No. no, they do not. So we're going to put that little slash and we'll say no. They do not form a proportion because they did not equal each other. Let's go on to the next one. We are comparing 1 half to 1 fourth and 16 to 8. So to start us off, we're going to have to do 1 half over 1 fourth equals what should go on the right side, Will? over eight. Very good. All right, I'm going to circle the things that are diagonal from each other. So we've got one half and eight, one fourth and 16. Drop down your equal sign, Taylor Dollar. What do I do on the left? Very good. And I'm going to put that eight over one. What should I put on the right side? Very good, and I'm going to put it over a 1. Jonathan, can I cross-reduce anything? What do the 2 and 8 become? Very good. What about the right side? Very good. And when you multiply those out, Jonathan, what do you get? Okay. Is this true, class? Does 4 equal 4? Yes, so that means what? It does form a proportion. For this next one, it asks us to solve the proportion and then tell which method you used. 
I want you guys to try using mental math on this one and see if you can figure out what the missing link is between those. Remember, as you're doing this, we are working, we know both the numerator and the denominator on the left side. So I'm working from the left to the right because I'm trying to get from a 5 over to that x. All right, you guys see if you can figure out your missing link. So if I am going from something smaller to something bigger, do I need to multiply to get there or do I need to divide? We're going to multiply to get there. What is my missing link? Four. Times four. Okay, so if I'm multiplying by four on the bottom, I also have to multiply, multiply by four on the top. On the bottom, we can see seven times four equals 28. On the top, five times four equals 20. 20. X equals 20. Once again, a super fast way to use it. And what was that method called? Mental math. Mental math. Underneath it asks us to tell what was the method that we used. If I look at problem B, there is one specific method I cannot use in this situation. Which one can I not use? Multiplication. Multiplication. How come? Because the x is in the denominator, I'm not allowed to use the multiplication method, all right? So for this one, we are actually going to use, which way do you think is best? Mental um, cross, cross, cross products. Because of it being an x plus 1 at the bottom, that makes the mental math kind of part a little bit harder, all right? So we are going to use cross products here. Let's circle these diagonally and drop down our equal sign. The first thing we want to do is always put the x or the variable on the left-hand side. So what am I multiplying by if I have that variable on the left side? x plus 1 times what? 12. 12. So here's what's interesting. When I have an x plus 1, I don't want that to be the first thing I write. I'm going to instead put my number first and then multiply it by, notice I'm going to put it in parentheses. Why do you think I put it in parentheses? It's not just an x and it's not just a 1, but it's x plus 1. So I want to keep that part together. Equals, Vivian, what am I going to put on the right side? 15 times All right, 15 times 20 or 20 times 15. Either one's fine. What do we have to do when there's a number stuck on the outside? Distributive. Distributive properties. So we're going to use our arrows to show that 12 has to get multiplied by not just the first term, but also the second term. Taylor Graham, what's 12 times x? 12x is correct. Taylor Dollar, if I am adding those together, what's 12 times 1? 12, very good. On the right side, Josh, what's 15 times 20? 300. Do you guys see any best friends there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Who? 12x. I'm going to put a little heart around there reminding myself, keep the 12x together as long as possible. Jonathan, what should I do next? Subtract by 12 on both sides. What am I left with, Will? 12x and 388. Not 388. No, 288. 288. Okay, so 12x equals 288. Vivian, how do I get x by itself? Divide by 12, and we've got to be fair, so we're going to do it to both sides. The 12x over there cancels out. Jonathan, what am I left with? Very good. X equals 24. And class, which method did we use? Um, we did use cross products. So on your test or your quiz next week, it's going to ask you specifically, what's the name of the method that you used? When we do one like this, that is called cross products. For the next problem, it says you can type 50 characters in 2 minutes. Your friend can type 75 characters in 2.5 minutes. Do these rates form a proportion? You can do this by finding the unit rate, or you can do it by finding cross products. You guys choose which way you would like to do it. Try it on your own. If you're watching the video, go ahead and pause and see if you can do it on your own. All right, Taylor, what should I do? Okay, 50 characters for every two minutes, then what? And then 75 characters over two minutes. All right. 
Very good. So the one thing I want you to notice, when you're doing a model in real life, you want to make sure that you've got units attached, and her units are the same on both sides, characters per minute and characters per minute. What did you do after that, Taylor? Okay, she did cross products. So we dropped down our equal sign. What did you put on the left side? And on the right side? 75 times 2.5. Okay, 75 times 2, or 2 times 75. Okay, what'd you get? 125. Okay, and on the right side, what'd you get? 2 times 75 is All right, Taylor, do those equal each other? No. no, they do not. So I'm going to put that little slash through there and then write, no, they are not equivalent to each other. All right, so there's two more questions that I want you to actually add to the back of your notes on the green. So if you would flip to the very back of that page, I want you to write down number nine. Are two-thirds and five-ninths equivalent? And then go about halfway down and write number 10. Are three-eighths and 12 30 seconds equivalent? All right, so you're going to find questions just like this on your test coming up. Um, the first one, how could I do that to see if they're equivalent or not? Jonathan, what do you think? How could I do that? Okay, we could definitely do it like a unit rate. What's the other way we could do it? Okay, mental math, cross products, all of those would work. So we're going to go ahead and set up ratios. First off, two-thirds, compare it to or equal to five-ninths. In this case, I'm going to try the cross products way, so I'll circle them diagonally from each other. On the left side, 2 times 9. On the right side, 5 times 3, or 3 times 5. Vivian, what's 2 times 9? 18. 18. Will, 3 times 5? Question, 15. 15. Josh, does 18 equal 15? No, it does not. So we're going to draw a little slash through it, and the answer is no, they are not equivalent. All right? I want you to try to do number 10 on your own to see if they are equivalent or not. For the final question today, it says, are 3 eighths and 12 30 seconds equivalent? So I saw a lot of you who did 3 eighths equals 12 30 seconds. Did anyone else do it the same way we did the first one with the cross products? Okay? So I saw you circled them. Oh, just kidding. Um, listen, one way that I want to show you real quick that you could have done it was mental math, okay? To get from a 3 to a 12, what would I have to do? Yes, divide. Multiply. Multiply by what number? Uh, um, uh, four. Four, okay? So 3 times 4 equals what? Um, 12. 12. So then let's try the bottom. Does 8 times 4 equal 32? Yes. Yes, so that's a real fast way to see that answer could be yes, all right? But not everybody did it that way. Okay, a lot of people did it instead, 3 eighths equals 12 30 seconds. How many of you would say you did it this way? Okay, so if I circled this, 3 times 32 equals 8 times 12. Guys, what's 3 times 32? 96. What's 8 times 12? 96. Does 96 equal 96? Yes. Yes, so no matter what, either way, you can still find out that, yes, they are equivalent to each other, okay? When it comes time for your test, a lot of times I do not care which way you're solving it or finding if they're proportional or equivalent. Um, just look at your instructions to see if it's specific about it. All right, so these notes are going to be something that's excellent for you to study um, for your quiz on Monday.